hear that you, you trained with DeMar um, in the offseason a little bit? No, I didn't train with him, but um, I hung out, him, hung out with him one time in the offseason. Just yeah, your thoughts cool on the situation just two days ago, and, and kind of what did you say to the team yesterday? Um, yeah, I've just been, just been praying, praying every day, um, think, thinking about them, you know, and, um, you know, just heavy on my heart about, you know, the whole situation and praying for his family and, you know, praying that everything works out. You know, I know God is a healer, so, you know, he'll see it through and, you know, hope he wakes up and be with his family and, you know, continue to, to enjoy his life. And, um, a lot, like a lot of people said, we risk our lives, you know, playing this game and, you know, sometimes you don't think somebody, something like that can happen, but you know, um, I'm just glad that you know they were able to respond and you know help as quickly as they can to you know um, get them to the, the medical center. And um, I just d just been praying for them and just told the team to be grateful for you know every day, um, you know for this game and you know life in general, you know because nothing's problems to us. Um, anything can happen in the blink of an eye, and um, you know just. Always give give God thanks for what you have, you know. And um, cause as a kid, we want to play this game and live this dream. And you know, sometimes it gets hard, life gets hard. But at the end of the day, you know, God will put your situation for you to see it through and just have faith in in Him and you know and everything that's going on. Uh, Derek, should is there talk about whether or not games should be played this weekend, or is it just this is what we do? We we are playing this weekend, especially this team with so much on the stakes. Um, I just uh, I think they handled that game and that situation very well on both sides and the, the unity that they both showed with with that situation that happened. But I mean, I, I mean, we I think we, we still have to play. I know, I know I know a lot of guys probably shook up by it. You know, I was the whole NFL, you know, community and you know all the players and, and things like that. But I know everybody around just praying for Demar. But I mean, I think I mean, we still have to play this game set. So. But at the end of the day, I think everybody's just praying for everybody's safety and want to be as safe as possible. What, what do you think uh, uh, setting out a, a week, uh, you know, will will help you with in terms of rest, rejuvenation, anything like that? Can you feel uh, any any bit of, of, of difference as you get ready this week? I don't feel 29 today, but that helps. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I feel great. Um, you know, like you said, I got the rest and ready to get back to work. How much you feel like this team's mindset is doesn't really matter what happened the last six weeks. If we went on Saturday, we kind of put in, in action what we want to do in the postseason. Yeah, uh, I think just having a positive mindset, just come ready to work, come ready to get better, push each other every single day on all three phases, and um, you know just be very detailed in everything that that we do. Leaders doing their job to you know help you know bring the intensity, and just doing that until Saturday. I know you find motivation in any way possible. A lot of the guys, you know, talking to them, they, they said that the fact that nobody's picking you guys, they relish that, they love that situation. How do you approach that? Do you look at that as like a, a form of motivation for yourself? Um, yeah, I don't really try to get too much in the outside stuff and nobody picking us. But we still got to line up and go play. So it's just you no know, trust believing in the guys we got here and what we do and continue to work until Saturday and then see what happens on Saturday. Derek, this core group has won a lot of has won a lot of big games together, in particular a lot of big road games. And sometimes it maybe it is people picking it or or whatever. You know, a lot of people think that maybe the big you get hurt last year, for example, go out to LA and get a big win. You've been a part of a lot of those wins. Why is there a consistent element of this team that has been a part of that? No, I just think we trust and believe in you know the culture here, the guys here, and you know teammates and our game plan and you know and what we want to do. You know the style of football we like to play. And um, I think it's just, you know, wanting to get back into that, coming to work every day with a great mindset, positive attitude, and wanting to get better and pushing each other to be better. Just when we go out there, we execute and do what we need to do on Saturday. What did you see from Josh, the way he played Thursday night, and uh, just kind of his approach in practice going forward? Yeah, man, just uh, great demeanor, poise, um, taking control of the huddle, going out there, taking what the defense uh, gives him. And he's had that demeanor since he's got here. And then, then being in there with him this week, you know, he's he's locked in, and um, I'm excited for him. When you look back at that first game, do you see a lot in the first quarter that tells you how, how you guys can get going a against them? I mean, yeah, we had some positive plays. We were moving the ball. Um, we just, uh, you know, had some stuff inflicted wounds with turnovers and, th and things like that. But I think you just watch that film and, and you learn from it. 
see the things that um, you know we, we did well to you know try to go emulate that uh, during the game on Saturday, which is the stuff and flick the rooms. You know we can't have those. Aside from the turnovers, is there something else specifically why the run game was successful against the Jaguars last time? I, mean, I just think you know guys coming off the ball, blocking, being physical. Um, you know one cut runs, everything that we preach about in the run game, and just trying to dominate the line of scrimmage. I think guys did a great job of doing that. And um, you know, we try to continue with that until this week and you know, lead it to Saturday. You got any birthday plans? No, nah, I'm just thankful to see another one. Is it safe to say you'd like a win for your birthday? Uh, definitely, <laughs> for sure. You got anybody in your friend group that is a Jags fan that would potentially trash talk you this week or, or if they wouldn't be in your friend group if they're doing that? Um, you know, uh, got guys I went to high school who are who are Jags fans, but they don't really talk trash. I mean, guys I played football with in high school, the Jags fans. You know, they're all from that area, and the people around from my hometown are probably Jags fans as well. But nobody talks trash. They probably will, you know, during the game. But I, I mean, I won't hear them. But you've been impressed with what they've been able to do, and what, what they do so well on. <laughs> what have they done well defensively? Um, yeah, I mean, they've been playing lights out. Um, defensively, I think they play very well together. I think they are solid um, from the front and to, all the way to uh, their, their secondary. I think their uh, defense lines are uh, disruptive. Linebackers are fast. They're smart. They, they flow very well. Uh, secondary, they, they tackle very well, um, very experienced. Um, and, you know, they, you know they, they rally from each other anytime, anytime they make a big play. So they've been playing very well, I think, on all three phases. And um, you know, it's going to be tough on Saturday. Derek, you've never Last been question. known as you know, a fumbler or anything like that. Are you doing anything extra in terms of ball security, anything individually in practice? Or? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've been you know, trying to do the best I can to work on it, harp on it. Uh, me and Coach Drew is working on it a lot. Um, whenever we are doing anything with the ball, just make sure I'm keeping it high and tight, being conscious of it when I'm out there trying to fight for extra yards. Cause that's you know usually when stuff like that happens, you're not paying attention. And defense, defensive players come back, come from behind, raking the ball out, and just doing everything I can to be, make sure I take care of the ball and don't put us in no uh, critical situation. You know when the ball comes out. Craig uh, Stoney is on a, a you know in position to set a, a mark potentially that has stood for decades. Uh, is it almost a little ridiculous to think about uh, a, a record that has stood for that long being at peril by a rookie? Yeah, it's it's obviously a great thing that he's done so far this year. Um, to be honest with you, we really haven't talked to him about it, um, which I'm sure he he knows about it, but. Um, you know, our main focus is to punt the ball as well as we possibly can because uh, Jacksonville's got a dynamic returner in uh, number 39, Jamal Agnew, and we've got to do a hell of a job of stopping him. Um, so if he ends up getting the record, great. Uh, be extremely proud of him. Be extremely proud of all the other guys that helped him. Um, so, yeah, to be honest with you, we haven't really talked about it, but I'd be happy for him, though. On the net side of things, like how are you guys doing as far as getting that hang time where, where it needs to be? Yeah, uh, we need to continue to work on that. Um, wasn't what we wanted this past week. Uh, so we'll continue to have him get up and through the ball because, you know, when teams end up getting eight man on us where they're making everyone protect and we're singled out on the outside, we got to do a great job of getting hang time so our gunners can go down there and make plays, whether it's tackles, whether it's fair catches. Um, all those things are going to help our team win the game. So we're going to really focus in on that um, today also as well as we did yesterday. How have you done on directional punting? It doesn't seem like you guys have done a lot of using one sideline or the other to try yeah. to have that extra man. Yeah, uh, great question because it's a totally different philosophy than what we had the past years. Um, and we want to obviously play to his strengths too. And, you know, he's a guy that obviously can uh, get a lot of yards on his punts. So uh, the directional isn't uh, what we're used to, but we'll continue to work with him. But we really want him to work on getting direction, hang time. Uh, and then when he can put them all together, obviously uh, our punt team does well. Played so many guys this year. Uh, how, what kind of challenge does that present you? You've got so many guys rotating, maybe in and out of your units. Yeah, uh, it is challenging, but it's fun because we're getting new guys in a bunch, and uh, they have an opportunity to go make plays. So, uh, you know, we really have to sit down and try to focus in on each individual skill set and see what they can do really well. And if it's running down the field as fast as they possibly can to go cut off the field, we'll end up doing that. But I think that's a great part of uh, and the challenge of coaching is uh, when you work with new guys, you got to play to their skill set. So um, that's something that we have fun doing um, and hopefully ends up working out for us. How 
much has Josh been able to absorb and how much does an actual full practice week uh, help uh, considering he's had maybe four or five days of actual full practices since he got here? Yeah, it's been impressive how much he's been able to retain from one week to the next and then you know where we've been able to add things. Uh, he has a really good understanding of football, been around a lot of systems, uh, and so he's able to you know, kind of acclimate himself a little bit quicker than maybe a, you know, a rookie would or a younger player. How do you like the way he was able to keep things on schedule and, and execute the offense in his first start? Yeah, I thought it was a testament to his poise and his control. You know, he, he was in command uh, most of the night, and I, I thought it showed. And, you know, that's what we're looking for is to, you know, make sure that we're not putting ourselves in bad positions offensively. And uh, I think he did a nice job of that. What have you learned about him, Todd, veteran, compared a... to what you, the information you had when he came in? And what have you learned since he's been in the building? Yeah, uh, tremendous work ethic. Um, you know, I didn't know Josh all that well uh, coming into this thing, but he loves football. He's passionate about it. Uh, starting to see a little bit more of his personality now that he's in this role and the way he interacts with his teammates, uh, wide receivers and, and tight ends in particular. Uh, you know, and he's done a nice job, you know, running the line of scrimmage and making some checks and protection adjustments and all that. So it's been uh, fun to watch the progress. I guess decide what to add to his plate this week as you go forward uh, in terms of what he can handle with the offense and how he can get on the same page with the receivers. It's certainly, a, you know, it's paired with what we want to uh, try to attack in Jacksonville's defense, you know, so being able to kind of look at that together. Uh, see what kind of concepts may hit his brain or he has exposure with or history with, uh, you know, and, and being able to find that blend. So uh, I think there's a, a balance there and certainly one input from him, you know, as we go through this this uh, process together. And, and he's done a nice job of communicating. So from the turnovers, Tom, what do you think you guys can do better than in the previous Jacksonville game aside from the turnovers? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously uh, the turnovers is a, a number one, you know, but we also had a couple times in the second half where we put ourselves way behind the sticks with kind, kind of those self-inflicted wounds. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to uh, stay ahead of schedule and, and make sure we're not putting ourselves, uh, you know, in bad situations. You, you and Mike have both consistently said that you intend to get the ball more to Traylon and more to Chig. But we haven't seen like the all go with that. Is this, shouldn't this be the kind of game where you're all in with the two most dangerous guys? Yeah, we hope so. And we certainly have made attempts to. Uh, just because the production hasn't been there doesn't mean the effort hasn't. So uh, we're always looking for ways to get our playmakers the football. And, and this week, uh, certainly, that's, that's paramount. Would he potentially maybe help back a little bit in the second half on Thursday just to limit his snaps coming to this one? Or? Maybe what was going on with that with that Thursday night? Yeah, certainly we were trying to be competitive and go win that game, uh, you know. But uh, you wanted to be intentional and purposeful about you know people's rep counts or maybe what you were showing at a certain point uh, and, and things of that nature. It's also an evaluation process for Josh, and so uh, there were a lot of things that factored into that. Mike mentioned uh, earlier in the week about the inability to practice with speed over the last five six weeks. The fact you're able to maybe do more of that this week how much should that help Josh and how much maybe help other guys as well I think it helps everybody you know even just the energy yesterday at practice uh, you know being able to move around and, and get guys you know working full speed together uh, kind of created that chemistry and that excitement uh, you know to get on the same page and so uh, that that's always something that we're going to relish is the opportunity to get out there and, and work as close to full speed tempo as we can and that's where chemistry is built particularly with you know some new pieces in there you mentioned the reps. How, how does that work as far as regulating who's going in, what packages, et cetera? Is that something, a conversation yourself with the position coach, Mike Vrabel? Like, how does that whole thing? You mean game day or throughout the course of the week? Yeah, yeah so uh, we do a lot of tagging out of our personnel groups, meaning we'll tag specific players that, that we want in there. Uh, and so we try to handle it as best we can through that. But then there's dialogue throughout the course of the game. If there's a certain player that we're trying to – you know, uh, see on a certain route, or he's maybe uh, playing a little faster than somebody else is, or more physical. Uh, so you make those in-game adjustments. Uh, you know, some positions it's a little bit more relevant than others. You know, uh, Derek's going to go until he's uh, too tired to go. You know, but uh, certainly at the wide receiver and tight end positions, that that rotation can be a little bit fluid. And is Just there a build up for that leading up to the like the week leading up to the game, as far as like general. Okay, this guy, we got to make sure he gets this amount of reps, we're going to get him this amount, et cetera. Yeah, I think it's hard to put a certain rep count, uh, you know, goal, if you will, because you don't know how the game's going to go. You right. know? And uh, 
So what you try to do is as you're game planning, you try to balance it out or handle it within those personnel groupings to say, okay, we have enough in the game plan for so-and-so, we have enough in the game plan for so-and-so, and, and it kind of uh, you know, matures from there. So it's all part of the process of figuring out you know, what tools are going to be available and you know, how we can use them. You had a season high in pass attempts against the Cowboys. How much of that was a product of Derek not being available at versus wanting to get a full look at Josh and what he can do in the pass game. Yeah, I think yeah, certainly both contributed. You know, wanted to be able to see what, what Josh could do with his opportunities. Uh, wanted to be able to try to get some guys uh, opportunities on the outside as well. And then, uh, you know, when, when you don't have Derek back there, you're, you're not quite as uh, tempted to turn around and hand it off as much as you can. You say Traylon has done this year given, you know, he spent so much time off the field. How has he maybe been able to overcome that? Uh, and, and progress, in, in your opinion? Yeah, it's been a process. You know, there's been challenges to Traylon's uh, kind of back and forth availability, and I think that Rob Moore's worked very hard to try to uh, help him kind of understand the nuances of this offense and and you know some of the challenges uh, of the position at this level. You know, some things technique wise that. Uh, he wasn't really able to work on too much, whether it be you know the early part of his development uh, preseason, you know, and then uh, when he was unavailable for a little while uh, during the season. So you know that's been a journey for him, but I think he's worked very hard and he understands the work that it's going to take to get where he wants to get. Very competitive guy, and uh, you know I believe he's on the right trajectory. Among receivers with enough receptions to qualify, Roberts got the lowest yards per target in the league. How much of that's him? How much of that's what you're calling for him? How much of that's quarterback? Uh, you know, I think they're all contributing factors. You know, I'll always be looking for ways to generate more explosives and, and try to get uh, more yards in production. I you know, think it's fair to say that we've been you know, shy of that goal um, this year. But, you know, I, I think there are a lot of contributing factors that go into that. Uh, Robert has done a nice job uh, with some of the underneath zone adjustments and, and finding the holes uh, in the defense underneath for us. And sometimes those don't produce the most yards. What was the, uh, I guess, conversation like with Malik when he was told it was going to be Josh? And how has he kind of handled the, you know, the day since? Yeah, you don't get to this level without being a competitor. So I'm sure that there's uh, you know, a competitive spirit in there that was a, a little bit uh, stung by it. Uh, I'll leave you know, his reactions up to sharing with you guys uh, personally. But I know that uh, you know he's he's a high character and highly competitive individual uh, who wants to be out there. How, uh, as far as Lawrence coming to this game compared to the last time you saw him, just where has he had his best? Success? Yeah, I mean he's he's playing at a really high level right now. Um, I think he's throwing for over 1,200 yards these last five games, throwing eight touchdowns these last five games. Um, had a really good day against us the first time around. Um, and again, I think when he when he plays well, they win, right? And that's what they've been doing. They're they're playing as hot as anybody right now. They got dynamic playmakers across the board, outside the running back, the tight end, obviously. Um, they're all dangerous with the ball in their hands. They all can take it the distance, and they're all making plays for him right now. And he's doing a great job of finding all of them. Is there anything specific that you attribute to? them playing at a high level right now because they've had the playmakers, but they've really kind of taken it up a notch last time. Yeah, I think uh, I think his comfort level with what they're doing, um, I think he's doing a really good job of understanding what he's seeing defensively, getting the ball to the right people at the right times. Um, and like I said, they're all, they're all dynamic. So regardless of who it goes to, they're all making plays for him with the ball in his hands. But um, yeah, he's doing a good job. I think just his understanding of what he's seeing and being able to deliver the football, you know. And then, obviously, with ETM back there, that's a different dynamic too. That you got to be ready to stop him. So that adds another element to it. Why was it that, that film? You know, what problems did Evan Ingram kind of pose for your guys' defense, and how, how can you kind of look at that to fix that specific? Part? Yeah, really I think. Other weapons. I mean, I think there was a lot of run after the catch. He had the one play down in the end zone um, where he went up and caught it and made a play. Um, I thought we were in pretty good coverage, and we just didn't make it, and he made it, um, which good players do. Um, but there was a lot of catch and run elements to it. There was the under in the in the red zone that he caught and ran in on us. There was the two-minute one, a third and short, that he ran the juke route, caught it, and ran for another 20. Um, the screen was another big play for him. So. Um, when he has the ball in his hands, he's he's tough to deal with in the open field, and he's able to create 
yards, you know. So we got to do a good job challenging him at line of scrimmage. I felt like he, he won. He won some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups and was able to get the ball in his hands and do what he does. And he's another one that's probably playing the best football as a tight end in the NFL right now. If you exclude him last week, he's had like a surge in, in, in production. What, what have you seen? But is it game plan? Just targets going his way? What have you seen? Yeah, I think games? the quarterback likes him. I mean, I'd like him too if you throw it to him for five yards and he ends up getting 25. Like, I'd throw it to that guy a lot, right? Because he's, he's patting the stats with, with relatively easy throws, you know? Um, so I think there's a uh, the quarterback has a confidence in him, right? There's a confidence level that's grown throughout. And um, he's always been a dynamic playmaker. And he's, he's coming on. And he's playing at a really high level right now. He is. If you get uh, Chris, have been playing a lot of snaps outside, which is, I guess, is not ideal to have to have two rookies out there as much as you have. But are they, have they been kind of getting picked on a little bit though, being rookies out there? Yeah, I mean, I think I think all offenses game plan and try to figure out where their strengths are com compared to where they feel like they can have some advantage, you know, and they're going to try to attack those things. Um, I mean, it was good to see Trey respond there late in the game last week because it wasn't going good for him, and he knows that um, up until that point. But he came back. He challenged late in the game. Late, we were able to go field on third down. And um, if they're out there, those guys are expected to make plays, you know. And I've said it before. They got to anticipate the balls coming to them every single time. Like, no matter what position you are, you, you better anticipate that you got to make an impact on that play. Um, and don't wait around for the opportunity to come because – when it does, you're not going to be ready, you know. So, um, I mean, I'm kind of I'm pleased with where those guys have been. I, I know they've given up some plays here and there, uh, but I think they continue to challenge. They continue to try to do the things we coach them to do, and hopefully, come Saturday night, a few of those plays come our turn our way. If you get Christian back at a high level, what what would that mean for this defense? Yeah, I mean, we'll see where he's at as we get going here through the week. I mean, he did a little bit yesterday and. We'll see kind of where it goes here these next few days. But I think just the experience, you know, he's played a lot of ball. He's he's covered some good receivers in this league and he's going to be covering some really good ones this week if he plays. Um, so I think that's that's an aspect of it. Um, and then just really, I think, his understanding of what we're trying to do, what we what we ask of these guys in our scheme and everything else. Again, these rookies, they're not really rookies anymore. They've all played a lot of football for us. Um, but there is an element of experience and just a little bit further understanding with certain things um, in regards to our defense and also the offense and how they're attacking us. Like shutting down the run for you guys for a long part of this season, you know, made the other team one dimensional. That really helped the pass rush too. Has, has that lessened? I mean, even though you've been shutting down the run for the most part, is that not necessarily equated to, you know, better better pass rush as yeah, well? Yeah, we just haven't defended the pass. You know, I don't think that has anything to do with the run game. I think it's just we, we haven't done a good enough job defending the pass, affecting the quarterback, um, covering the guys, um, executing our zones. Like, we just got to do a better job of making sure we're all on the same page and our coverage understanding what we're asking them to do and then being able to go out there and execute. And we got to find ways to affect the quarterback. How we beneficial do. was it just to have that rest for Danico Autry? And, and looks like he's got some – re-energized energy out there you know, yeah, just watching him in practice. I think, uh, I mean, not even just last week. I think the when he was hurt, you know, coming back, like he's an older guy who's got a bunch of nagging things, right? So it might be one injury, but he's really getting treatment and getting healthy with all the other stuff he has going on. Um, but he is. He brings, he brings that energy, that excitement. I think he's really excited to play this week uh, to get back out there and when he, when he was down those four or five weeks, like he's a guy that's grumpy, you know, like he's mad. He doesn't want to be in that training room at all, ever. Like he wants to be out here practicing, playing. And I think there's just, it kind of develops an appreciation when you lose something for a little while and then you're able to get back out here and practice and play and be around the guys. Like I think that appreciation, that gratefulness to be back out here shows. Should be best combined version of he and Simmons that we've seen since October 23rd. Yeah, we have. I mean, we haven't seen them together in a while. So uh, that's what we're hoping. You know, that's why they're here. So hopefully those two guys have a good game for us and find ways to affect the quarterback. How do you feel about your inside linebackers group? Uh, obviously, you got um, maybe Dylan possibly coming back the way Jack's played recently that with Monty with that rotation. How do you feel about that going into this game? Yeah, I think they've taken big strides. I do. I think uh, Jack has been 
great for us these past two weeks. Um, he just does a great job of understanding our defense, communicating, getting lined up, being in the right spot. He does the things we coach him to do. Every single play, like he's going to he's gonna be where he's supposed to be, and he's going to know how, how teams can try to find the weakness in the play and the coverage and the run scheme, whatever it might be. Um, so he's a very cerebral player that it, it helps him a lot out there, and I think it helps a lot of our other guys. I think it brings comfort to a lot of our other guys hearing his voice. Uh, Monty has been progressing. He has. Um, he's made a lot of plays for us when he's been out there running around, hitting. I think it's improved um, each week with him and then getting Dylan back. We can kind of see where he fits in the mold, but hopefully he's ready to go and he can be locked in and make plays when, when he's asked to make them. Like when they're there, hopefully we can all show up and make the plays when we have our opportunities.